age of automation, AI, and robotics, we take many luxuries for granted. Luxuries that seem common in the modern world. But all the inventions we currently have stem from many great people in history. And without their creativity, inventions, and drive, the world would be a much different place. One such person in history is Ismail al-Hazari, nicknamed the father of robotics. Ismail would design, create, and inspire inventors for centuries to come. This is the story of one of the first roboticists, a man who helped shape the modern world. Born in 1136 AD, neither Di Akbarir or Zizijar, the accounts differ depending on who you ask. Both cities lay in present-day Turkey. His full name would be Badi Awaza Zaman Abu Ismail Ibn Awrazi Ari. And there is zero, absolutely zero percent chance I pronounced that right. So I'm going to be sticking with calling him Ismail. Ismail would be born in an extremely monumental time and location in history. Born basically in the middle of the Islamic Golden Age and in the middle of the Crusades. An interesting time to say the least. And being Muslim probably had those two overlapping moments in time play a poor pieces to his life. He would be located in a spot that not only saw a large mix of multiple cultures, cultures as far east as China and far west as England, but live in an area where history was being formed all around him, having a part himself in that formation of history being made. One of, if not the most influential person in his life, would be his father, along with his uncle. His father, whose name I could not find, or it was not recorded in history, would be an engineer for the Artiklu Palace. The Artiklu Palace was located in Diyarbakir, and at the time of Ishmael and his father would be ruled and governed by the members of the Artukids dynasty. His father, as well as being an engineer for Artiklu Palace, would be a craftsman and a merchant as well. Skills that Ishmael would learn and implement in his life. But Ishmael himself was almost not born into this world. His father would not have had his first child until somewhere around the age of 40. And apparently, the story goes Ishmael's father made a pilgrimage to ask God to bless him with a child. Well, true or not, it seemed to have worked. From there, Ishmael's father would teach him all that he had to offer. Raising Ishmael to become a master craftsman, to ensure Ishmael received an education, and eventually helping him gain the position of chief engineer at the Arkatu Palace. As for education, Ishmael was more self-made man, learning from others where he could and teaching himself along the way. For the most part, for engineering-wise, he would learn by doing, trial and error, rather than theory and thought experiments. Because of his trial and error ways, Ishmael was an extremely practical engineer. His creations and designs weren't just pleasing to the eye, but functional as well. As for his personal life, little is known. Rather it be because countenance had been lost over the passing of time, or because Ishmael is more focused on his work rather than his life. But for what we do not know about his day-to-day -day life is made up by the knowledge we know about his inventions. And inventions he had. Ishmael was a man who drew inspiration from the world and the amazing different items from foreign countries traveling through for trade. One such piece of engineering, which is one of his most famous creations, is the elephant clock. The elephant clock is a piece of art and no ordinary clock. Standing at over 26 feet tall, aka 8 meters, wide as 5 feet or 1.7 meters, and weighing around 7.5 tons. This was truly an elephant clock. To describe what the clock looked like, the elephant was an Indian Eastern elephant, had mannequins as a driver, a rider, and half a torso at the very top of the tower. There was a tower on top of the elephant, a Chinese dragon descending down from the top of the tower, two different types of birds, a falcon, a phoenix, adoring the, near the top and the phoenix at the top. And one of the coolest things 
is that all these creatures were not just for decoration, but had a function at being a piece of the clock. Now, t- telling time is cool and all, and super important, hard to do back in the day. But this clock did far more than that. The rider mannequin sitting in the tower moves and shows the amount of minutes that has passed in the hour. The half a man at the top, along with a dial, shows the number of hours since sunrise. Important to know how much time has passed. Then, every half hour, the phoenix that sits at the very tippy top spins because a ball is dropped rotating a gear. From there, the ball travels internally to a falcon. The falcon then drops the ball into a dragon's mouth. Because of the extra weight, the dragon rotates. The rotation of the dragon helps the clock reset for the next half hour. The dragon makes almost a full rotation and drops the ball into a vase, which then causes the rider of the elephant to hit a cymbal or a drum. And how is it all powered, you may ask? It is all from weights, pulleys, and most importantly, water. Water would be perhaps Ishmael's most favorite or the least most used power source for his inventions. Another example of his engineering skills and use of water power would be his music player. Since the beginning of humanity, everyone has liked music. And people have made instruments and different machines to make noise. But Ishmael was a man who would like to change the beat once in a while. So he designed and made a music player that had changeable pegs so that you could change the notes, beats, and even entire songs. A programmable music player. I, I can't even imagine people's amazement back in the day listening and witnessing a machine playing music and then a few wooden pegs moved around and you have a completely new song. It must have been mind-blowing to those people. Continuing on with programmable machines, Ishmael, I imagine, had the mentality of, why have people do a job when I can just make a machine to do it? So Ishmael was either commissioned or asked by wealthy families slash rulers to make an engineering marvel. So, he would make a machine to do a person's job. He would create a robotic server that would dispense tea and water. This humanoid robot server would make consistent pours into glasses then appear out of automatic doors and serve the drinks. There are refrigerators to this day that still suck at dispensing water and ice, and this man did it hundreds and hundreds of years ago. He didn't stop with luxury items. Like I said, Ishmael was extremely practical. Apparently, and take this with a grain of salt, again, little is known about his personal life, Ishmael one day saw farmers trying to irrigate their crops and saw how much they were struggling with this important task. So quickly, he went to designing and creating one of, if not the first, suction pump to help the farmers pump water. One, bravo for helping the farmers. But two, creating and implementing one of the world's first suction pumps, let alone coming up with the idea, but to come up with the idea, design it, make it, and then use it, something no one else has done, and do it all in the middle of the crusades, the willpower of this man must have been through the roof. To add on to the ability of this man, he seemed to be a man of the people. He developed water supply system to bring water to mosques and hospitals, which was implemented in Damascus. The Romans, who designed the aqueducts, would have been proud. Instead of using gravity to bring water places like the Romans, Ishmael's water system would be hydro-powered. But you know, what's even more crazy as inventions and mechanical principles go? Ishmael was the first written record, drawings, and implementations of a camshaft. For those unfamiliar with a camshaft, first of all, shame on you. Second, a camshaft is basically a shaft slash rod with egg-shaped lobes called cams. Hence, camshaft. And a camshaft is the mechanism that transfers rotational motion to reciprocating motion. Basically, every type of car engine in the world has a camshaft, and Ishmael thought of it, made it, and used it. Another thing which you can thank him for, although not directly, but still, you can thank him for it, the flushing toilet. He made, and I believe he made it for the Arkatu Palace, 
was a flushing sink. Washing hands was as important back then as it was today. Though people in the past may have washed hands for religious and ceremony reasons, it was still important. So Ishmael designed a robot that with a pull of a chain would pour water to wash hands. Then after a set amount of time, the water would stop and a figure would reach out, raise a towel so that you can dry your hands. The mechanism of chain to reservoir is the same mechanism we still use to flush toilets today. Ishmael, over his entire life, would create and learn, teaching himself timing, gears, ratios, all through trial and error. He would master rotational speed and using water as a power source. But with all this knowledge, it took time, years, decades, decades. And Ishmael grew older and closer to the end of his life. Doing so, he decided to write a book of his creations along with instructions on how to make them and how to assemble them. This is quite uncommon. This book would be called Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices. The book would contain around 100 different types of creations that he openly shared and wanted to teach others how to make. Unfortunately, time eventually caught up with this great inventor before completing Unfortunately, time eventually caught up with this great inventor, and before completely seeing his book come to life, Ishmael would pass at the age of 70 in 1206 AD. But those around him must have admired and loved him. For the same year of his death, they pushed his book forward and had it published. And I highly encourage people to check out this book. If you like Leonardo da Vinci, you'll love Ishmael's book. The illustrations he drew for this book are works of art. Colorful, masterful, distinguished art. His book would inspire many for centuries to come. Some of his inventions, like I said, are still used today. And something I found personally cool, because, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd. Apparently, Ishmael was, or maybe was, a huge inspiration to Leonardo da Vinci himself. Which, to be one of the great inspirational people, well, that doesn't put you up there with the greats, I don't know what does. Over the years, with passing of time, historians would nickname Ishmael as the father of robotics. For the machines he made could be changed and programmed. And although he is gone, he is not forgotten. Historical TV shows have done episodes on him. Turkey recreated some of his inventions to help inspire a new generation of inventors. And there are talks about missing inventions that are still buried, but due to the possible dig sites being preserved, it makes people not want to dig in that area. So we don't know if there could be more of his inventions hidden away. Ishmael, the father of robotics, a man from humble beginnings that made everything from elaborate clocks, some which displayed the positions of the sun and the moon, and made inventions that are vital to humanity today. To me, he is a man that hasn't had his full due in the sun yet for his contributions to humanity. As an engineer and personally, I'm a bit scared of people taking my ideas, and with him willingly giving them away, along with instructions and assembly directions to do so, which again is extremely rare, both inspires and humbles me. Though little is known about his personal life, he strikes me as a man who loved to create, who wanted to share with others and inspire others to build a more beautiful world. A man who did not look at his failures as mistakes, but rather learning lessons. A man who wanted to bring his dreams to life. And although we'll most likely never know his personal thoughts, I do hope those listening are inspired by this man, this inventor. I hope he has inspired all of you to create and add to on to this world. To draw inspiration from everywhere and not be afraid to try, even in the face of failure. And I hope I gave Ishmael some of the limelight that he truly deserves. And with that being said, thank you, Father Robotics. And thank you all for listening. Thank you.